Good morning everybody and welcome to Uganda and Kampala Road. I just thought I'd give a uh, update of what I've been doing and what you're looking at is the uh, Kampala, end, Kampala Road end of the uh, station and the answer to the question is absolutely nothing um, because I haven't uh, got anything to put in the station. Uh, on a positive note I have got um, I'll place this station over roof, which is the Hornby effort. Um, and I think with a terminus station you do need a, a terminus roof, or a, a roof, and so I've decided to go with it. Problems are for me is track cleaning, as I've uh, explained before, so what I'm going to do is glue all these five units together so they can be lifted off as one. That makes it very easy for me to get in and uh, clean the track inside. I'll um, cut off those little legs, uh, paint the legs up to halfway and then above halfway change that blue colour to grey and uh, hopefully it'll look pretty good or reasonable, let's put it like that. Um, something else I've been doing is uh, I've installed these things on each line just to give me some sort of uncoupling action. Um, so when I'm sitting at the other end of the layout I can run a locomotive in and uncouple then obviously run a locomotive at the other end of the train to haul out the coaches again. So they're installed, they're the Pico ones. Uh, they work quite well. Probably about 80% um, success rate on the run over the first time. I've tested a number of different locos. It's obviously dependent on the type of tension lock coupling you've got. The older style works much better than the younger, uh, the, the newer style, but anyway, it does the job. So they are in the different, excuse for the wobbly camera, different uh, lines. So, yeah, a um, little bit of progress there. Moving on to the other end of the uh, station, um, I have been doing some work I had a bit of space on the end of the station, so I've decided to put a retaining wall in. Sorry, the light is extremely bright. The camera's pointing directly into it. Um, so I've done this uh, retaining wall, and I'll have a town scene on the top, and that will eventually join up to the station up there, giving some sort of depth and 3D effect to what I'm trying to do move across. Um, so this is plywood um, and I've put what weed and grass stuff I've got etc to hide the join and some fencing. It's got to be finished off. I put some buttresses up to make it look a little bit more realistic than just a piece of card. Decided on the stone um, rather than brick, because everybody seems to have brick and I thought I'd have stone. Uh, what is it? It's Metcalf. Metcalf stuff. So, and I've run out, so I can't carry on to the station. I had a packet and I've used it in previous layouts and bits and pieces, so that's what I had left. And uh, that's where I'm going. I put some card on top to put some low relief houses on, but the card I've left as an experiment can't get this plaster card I've been looking for here at schools and stuff, school shops and stuff. As you can see the card is beginning to warp and bend in the humidity. So I'm going to have to wait to get some of that 2 mil plaster card to make a base. Um, yeah, so that's just situation. Uh, the other thing I've been doing is motorising some points and um, there are four points here from this particular siding, which is where the DMUs come in. Um, and I was hoping to get all four points motorized, but my propensity to order faulty goods <laughs> has meant that my accessory decoder that arrived only has three of the four decoders working. It's faulty. I told the guys in Sheffield, they, have, they obviously want it back for warranty claim, but for me that's too hard, I mean, it's six weeks away for me to send it back and, and um, get a new one is six weeks, plus it's a real problem for me to go to the only post office in the country that deals with international mail, so I've decided to keep it. So 
So what's happened here is I've put an underground point motor there, an underground point motor there, which was interesting, these, because these points have been there for a long time and there was no pre-drilled holes, and an above ground Hornby point motor on this Hornby point. And then the fourth one, unfortunately, doesn't have anything yet. So I've got some, I've got to order some more point accessory or accessory decoders. Um, and then I've got to make that little plastic hut look a bit more realistic, I guess, make it dirty, run down, etc. Okay. Righty ho. Um, as you can see, I've invested in a real uh, colour light signal. Um, I've always had the Hornby stuff um, and I've got plenty of them but they're all broken. So I thought I would buy one of these and I am stunned. They are an absolute thing of beauty. I love it. And the detail, um, yeah, I've never seen one before. And when you compare it to the Hornby effort, there's no comparison. So that's the way I'm going to go. Um, as I said before, I've, I've seen this site that sells the infrared uh, under the track sort of uh, switches, which seem very, very simple to set up on these signals. So that's the way I'm going to go. Very impressed. I think it's a Burko. Um, I can't remember the brand, but yeah, stunned. Very proud of this. So. Uh can't wait to get them up and running and get some more. They're not cheap though, they're 17 quid each, which is not that much more than this. I've seen these on eBay for about 15, 16, so I suppose you could say that's great value for money then. Um, but once you set up the infrared, you're doubling your price, so just gotta be aware of that. Right, so I have next to the retaining wall um, put in a TMD, a small one. It, uh, it was an engine shed on a previous uh, layout. T I don't know what TMB means actually, so I'm just sounding important there, but traction motion motive depot uh, terminal? Don't know. Should look it up, I guess. Um, so there's some fake concrete, as they call it, um, and uh, I've put in, elected to put in ballast in the track rather than try and put the concrete in the middle. Uh, so just panning back a bit, you can see what I've done. Um, trying to make it look busy. Haven't finished it yet, haven't weathered it yet. Not sure whether I'm going to keep that particular water tower there, but um, I want a building there. Um, you know, a driver, a couple of drivers or something walking around. One slight cock up was the fuel depot, the refueling point. It doesn't fit in here. Um, so it has to sit there at the moment. Um, I got that from Hatton's and on the second attempt. They sent me a toilet, a men's toilet on the first attempt um, by mistake and uh, I had to reorder that because they, they asked uh, for me to send it back, the toilet that is, to change over and the cost of doing that, six quid fifty. And again the time would have been prohibitive so I just reordered it. I uh, wasn't very happy with Hatton's attitude on that, but there you go, that's enough said. So that's my uh, TMD, runs in there. Really need static grass now uh, for all this area. Um, I've put the, the flock on, whatever you call it, and some bushes. It really needs tall grass. I was thinking back to when I last travelled on British Rail, and that was, or British Railways, and that was in 2011 from Stowmarket to Leeds. I'll never forget when I changed trains at Newmarket <clears throat> to get the 225, the weeds on the unattended track around Newark were taller than me, and I'm six foot three. So I was a bit, bit staggered, but there you go. Okay, uh, I've also put in a um, security fence and made a bit of a hash of it. it. Quality of that fencing, the erection of that fencing was pretty poor, so I had to get out of it. I hadn't painted it prior to putting it in and I needed to get out of a problem. So what I'm going to do, as you can see here, I put a, a team of men working on it and it'll be a scene as a new fence going up. I hope I'm not wobbling the camera too much. Um, and they're going to paint it and they haven't quite completed putting a new security fence up. So 
Um, that's how I'm going to get out of it. I haven't finished this area here yet because the point motor here and the point here I haven't uh, got a accessory decoder yet to do these two points. Once I've done these two points then I can start the landscaping for the track going up into the mountains as I call it. So there we are. That's what I've been working on. Just pan back a little bit so you can see. Just quickly one other thing I've been doing is working on how the station operates. Uh, <laughs> It's a terminal station, it's amazing how you think, oh yeah, I have to run a train in, run a train out, but it's not, it doesn't work like that. Plus the entrance to my station is not flat. Um, there's quite a gradient for locos coming into the station and then it peaks about here and then comes down. And these points here are on a little bit of a gradient, which is not ideal for points. So I've been testing what to do, which locos run well. Uh, steam locos have a problem with I've got two double slits, one here and one just behind the camera. Um, the Pacific seem to have a problem with the, the, the large driving wheels coming across the uh, double slips. This side of the station, this track here, leads to platforms one to four and is okay for most steam locomotives. Uh, uh, yes, most steam locomotives, but six wheel drive steam just can't make it at all. Um, so I'm steering clear of those and any loco that comes has to be all-wheel pickup to uh, make sure it doesn't stall or hesitate. I really dislike hesitating locos across points and I love slow running so it gives me great pleasure when a loco comes in very slowly and doesn't hesitate. So a bit of work going on there, how to operate this station, which locos come in, which locos are stationed here to pull the train out again. Um, here's it. That's the second double slip there. So, uh, yeah, it's been good fun. I've enjoyed that. Just underneath the baseboard, um, my wiring is getting out of hand. It's a bit bird nesty. Um, and I've still got about 20 sets of points to wire up as well. I've got 33 sets of points on here, of which about 11 are done. Um, a couple don't need doing because they're, they're pretty, mean nothing where they're going. So yeah, it's a little bit messy. Gary Newman once wrote a song, I Dream of Wires, and I think that's what I'm doing. So, a bit of tidying up working needed under here. Just uh, another view of the TMD, whatever that means. Uh, the light is very strong, so if this is appearing washed out, my apologies. It's a beautiful day today. 24 degrees, breeze off the lake. Very low humidity, wonderful. So looking inside uh, the layout, <coughs> excuse me, I have finished ballasting the branch line. Apart from the line that runs down to the main line in the station. So that is now complete. I've done it with this sort of Brighton Beach looking Paris, which I quite like. It's, it looks old and unkempt and uh, branch liney. Um, so it goes, I won't show it all, but it goes around here to there. And that's a point there because I want a depot up here to store the end here. So. The only thing I haven't done is the girder bridges, which is easily painting grey. Because I think girder bridges are wood. Not uh, ballast. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a throb in my throat. Um, not sure, so I'm going to have to look at pictures of girder bridges because they flex. I'm not sure if they're wood or do they have ballast, so that bit I've got to check up on. So at the station, which is up here, up on the top, uh, I've got to name it yet, I've got a few ideas. Uh, there's a little siding which can store unused trains or whatever, trucks. That's my little bubble car. I see there's a whole swathe of new generation bubble cars about to hit the market from Backman and Dapol and Hattons. Um, that's the 117, which I've been doing a little bit of work on. I've cut off the buffers there and put the larger, you know, put the larger style buffer on with some vacuum pipes and what I want to do now is cut down this gap 
make a close coupling and join the two uh, corridors there so it looks more realistic. I really like the, I know they're old, um, 35 years old this loco, but I really like it. A lot of character and it runs almost as well as the 108 from Batman. So happy with that. I've uh, been doing the ballasting and the uh, a bit of grass and bush just to do something up here. Again, I'm really waiting for static grass. And a shout out to Barnabas Junction, I think it's called. He's done a great little video last week on how to make your own static grass applicator. And I could do that because uh, I can get all the bits here. So I'm going to make one and then order some static grass. So, yeah, great little site. He's got some tremendous projects going on on his uh, layout. So, thank you very much. Okay, another little job I'm doing is uh, I'm trying to use up some. I've got tons of this matting, and uh, I've pulled some out to try and use it. And I, look at that, Monk's Bar. That's York, I think. Last time I was in York was 2006. So that thing, these have been following me around all over the world for years. So I've started using it. And it may not be quite as realistic. I don't know. We'll see. Um, See how we go, but that's what I'm using. And I'm putting it, there you go, that's how I treat it. I'm putting it over there, I'll get closer. Okie doke, so I've done a bit of a hill here. And uh, a layer of this coming through. Yeah, I've done a bit of a hill, and I've only got so much bushing and trees here, so I've actually run out now. And uh, detailing this side. Um, I like it, I quite like it. Uh, the grass is a little bit sort of uniform colour, so I need to probably put more uh, of the different types of sprinkle type grass you've got to um, give it some variety and some shading difference. I'll just jump on the other side and show you what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so as you can see, it's a very uniform green. Um, I need to do something about that. I've tried to break it out with bushes and trees and that's going to be the tunnel entrance there uh, but yeah, it's all one colour I've been experimenting with landslips which need painting and weathering and all that sort of thing but uh, it's, it's okay I guess um, I'll persevere I think once I've got the the ballasting in here and some plant life down the bottom there, hide the point motor, sprinkle uh, other different coloured grasses over this area. It should look okay, I think. Yeah. And mountainous and moorland, <coughs> which is what I remember in Yorkshire. So, uh, and some sheep. I'm looking for some sheep as well. Some very old ballast here. This ballast is about 10 years old in the previous layout, so I've got to dig all this up, get rid of it, uh, put some point motors in, probably from underneath, which is interesting, and uh, see how we go from there, uh, and then re-ballast after that. I haven't got any ballast at the moment, it's... Um, I've run out. Okay, and finally, um, I'm looking at uh, upgrading. My Elite is uh, not doing what it should be doing. Um, I can't upgrade it to the new software. It won't talk to the computer. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Um, this throttle is uh, failing slightly. Otherwise it works fine. Um, but the, the main reason is this. Um, I rely very heavily on this because it's a walk-around. I can walk around, spin around, over there etc. Uh, which is great, but it does restrict you on uh, the usage of the Elite. Um, it's not nearly as powerful and uh, it really sort of uh, brings the Elite down to another select. Um, and that's because you can only have locos numbered up to 59, your accessories are from 61 onwards, etc. and uh, um, I had everything set up in this very nicely, but with the select plugged in, you cannot talk to some of the locos, etc. So 
I'm looking at a replacement. Um, it's quite a big investment. Uh, I do have a Gauge Master Prodigy somewhere. I haven't found it yet. I don't know if that survived the trip. I haven't plugged it in to see if it works. But I was sort of thinking of the uh, Backman Dynamis Ultima. Um, I've read some horror stories about the infrared issues with the handsets. Hopefully they've got that sorted out. My issue here would be, just panning around, is the brightness of the day. Um, I know that interferes. I've got some tint on the window, as you can see. Uh, but I know that interferes with the infrared signal, the strong sunlight. Um, but I am looking at it. Uh, it will be about a £300 investment minimum, I think, um, with two handsets and a, and a booster, because I have two power um, sections in this layout. Um, so I'd have to have a power booster. Um, but I would order it, I wouldn't, I'm thinking of having a look at it when I come to the UK, but I would order it um, because I can get VAT off, which is about £60-65 pounds off the price at 20 quid for postage, so you do get a bit of a discount. I've read the specifications for the Ultima, it's no more powerful really than this and what this is capable of. Um, I think the beauty of it is, in the handset you have everything to walk around with rather than with a select you only have a, a cut down version of this. Um, the, old, the old thing I found about the Ultima is you have to put batteries in, it's not rechargeable. Um, I would have thought they would have, with the handset, put a docking station on so when you're not using it it's recharging. Um, but it's not, it's AAA batteries or something, that's the only odd thing I found out about it. But it's no really more powerful than the Elite. I could buy a new Elite. Uh, 200, 250 pounds again and just swap it over but for me all the button pressing and the selects shortcomings uh, I'm getting more frustrated with this every time I use it so that's something I'm thinking of doing um, my next video I think will be or I know will be I've got a new loco uh, which is the updated version of that one in the picture I now have a 21 uh, pin decoder to go into it, so I'm making progress. Uh, so I might do a comparison video, I've never done one before. I haven't even got the logo out of the box, so somebody's going to tell me they're identical, which means the video will be very short. Um, but I do have another loco, uh, I've got two new arrivals. Um, I've got heaps of locos that are not even out of their boxes, so I may do a... Uh, I will do a video with those two locos and a comparison between the, t the new Backman split head code and that one there, which is at the head of the Mark 1 train. Running very well, continues to, so I'm happy. Uh, so that's it from me, and uh, I'd just like to say I've noticed that my subscribers have jumped from 4 to 16, so thank you very much. Hope you remain interested and not too bored with my ramblings. and. Uh, from me now and uh, that's it I think so goodbye from Kampala and thank you for watching cheers for now